Freedom of the press is a revered concept in Europe's democracies. It's a key pillar of Article 5 in Germany's Basic Law and of Article 11 in France's seminal Declaration of the Rights of Man. However, even with these predictions in place, in 2022, the European Commission proposed a new law to protect media independence. This was held as good news until it was used to allow surveillance of European journalists. How did this happen? There are many brave journalists across the world who risk their lives to tell the truth. In Europe too, journalists and media often face threats. In September 2022, the European Commissioner for Values and Transparency issued a proposed regulation on the freedom of the press, the European Media Freedom Act. This text, known as the EMFA, came with good intentions to protect journalistic independence and media pluralism. It came about after incidents of gagging in Poland and Hungary and following accusations that the governments of Greece, Spain and Bulgaria were using spyware, such as Pegasus, to monitor investigative journalists. After the Pegasus scandal, the European Parliament put pressure on the Commission to legislate in favour of freedom of the press and against spying on journalists. The sticking point is in Article 4 of this bill, which states that spyware is not to be used to monitor the media except on grounds of national security. And that's when journalists started to worry. Each member state can make its own definition of what national security is. For some, this is just about acts of terrorism, while for other countries with more authoritarian governments, such as Viktor Orban's in Hungary, it's about newspapers that may be a bit too critical of his power, or that criticize institutions and investigate financial activities. The term national security was added by the Commission to appease those member states who see the EU as meddling in their affairs. Member states can be reluctant to agree on safeguards at a European level. So the aim was really to reduce the scope of the text, to reduce its impact. Further to this, there has been some very strong lobbying from France, which is campaigning to protect the exclusive powers of member states on matters of national security. At the moment, the French government is obsessed with having free reign in terms of security. So, even if journalists are neutral and just doing their job, to the intelligence services, they're intermediaries who enable them to carry out investigations. Thanks to Reporters Without Borders, we can see how the French ministries of defence and the interior have justified their position. In France, certain journalists need to be monitored in order to identify agents and officers from foreign intelligence services, to determine their activities on behalf of the latter, to identify their targets and contacts, to get to know their operational methods and their subjects of interest. As this report on the Disclose website shows, France, along with six other countries, Greece, Italy, Finland, Sweden, Cyprus and Malta, intends to widen the definition to potentially allow them to detain and monitor journalists and carry out searches of them. While this threat provoked reactions from 80 European media organizations, the general public was barely aware it was going on. In October 2023, the European Parliament placed restrictions on France and its supporters. It stated that surveillance of journalists might be permitted but only under judicial control to prevent a serious crime and without allowing access to journalistic sources. According to this European text, a journalist can't be monitored without the prior authorization of a judicial authority. Except that that's not enough of a guarantee. I was monitored, detained and searched with the authorization of a judge. So it's not enough. On the 15th of December last year, after numerous meetings between the EU Council, Parliament and Commission, MEPs and member states finally reached an agreement. And the result has everyone claiming victory, including reporters without borders. There is no mention whatsoever of national security in any part of this legislative text. 
nothing. It's true, the troublesome reference to national security has been removed, but somehow the idea has stuck. Yes, so national security isn't spelled out as such. The European Parliament sees this as a victory, but in fact it's just been replaced by a reference to the founding treaty, which says member states have sole responsibility for protecting their national security. The only good news is that this text does fill a gap in the law. Before, spyware could be used without legal restrictions. Now it will be regulated. But the scope is so broad that member states will effectively be able to do as they please. This law still says, as member states, you have the right to monitor journalists as part of legal investigations into around 30 crimes. For example, there's terrorism, rape and murder, but also corruption, cybercrime and counterfeiting. So, if one of your sources is working on an issue, such as corruption or counterfeiting, as a journalist, you can be placed under surveillance. The agreement is still to be formally adopted by member states and MEPs in early 2024. But in the event of a vote, one option for dissenters of either persuasion remains, the Court of Justice of the European Union. Member states can bring action of annulment. Uh, so if an EU act is believed to violate EU treaties or fundamental rights, uh, the EU Court of Justice can be asked to annul it. And it can be asked by an EU government, by the Council of the EU, by the European Commission or the European Parliament. So for instance, what uh, civil society organizations can do, journalists can do, they can try to influence their national governments. So it will be up to EU member states to refine the common framework of this bill. It will be entirely at their discretion whether to limit or ban spyware in their own countries. This software hides and gathers vast amounts of data, which makes it impossible to limit it or effectively regulate it by law. You can't say to the police, don't look at these messages because they're too personal. No, they're going to have access to a huge amount of data. We're talking about locating places. We're talking about all the metadata, all the websites that you've visited, every app you've opened. And when having control of the camera, the microphone, it's huge. And for us, nothing justifies the use of such dangerous tools. Thank you.